one of the government's most trusted organizations, is celebrating a birthday this year. The Government Accountability Office is turning 100 in 2021. Gene Dodaro is Comptroller General of the United States, leader of the Government Accountability Office. Gene, welcome. Thanks very much for coming back on the program. I want to start by killing a rumor. There is a rumor going around that you've been at GAO for the entire hundred years of its existence. I, I, have, <laughs> I have found a photo. The earliest photo of you I can find is from the 80s. How long have you actually been at GAO and how has GAO changed since you started there, Gene? Well, Francis, I've been at GAO now about 47 and a half years. I came right out of college in 1973. Uh, Watergate hearings were underway. Uh, it was very interesting at that time. Uh, GAO was in the midst of uh, its evolution from financial uh, management issues being our primary focus to uh, a focus on performance auditing, which is what we're known for today, which is evaluating programs, uh, making sure they're efficient and effective, accomplishing their objectives. And so, so we, we were in that transformation and it, it, it continued for a while. And then we started to move away from not only looking at individual programs, but the entire management operations and infrastructure of agencies. And then we were advising the Congress on some government-wide management reforms like the Chief Information Officer Act, the Clear Cohen Act that set up CIOs across the government, the Government uh, Management Performance Act. And so we got involved in many more you know, management issues. And then most recently, we've been adding additional disciplines as our mission has changed. We've added actuary, scientists, uh, you know, computer security people. And most recently, we're you know, focused on expanding our uh, efforts on science and technology matters. We're hiring all sorts of uh, sorts of skills in that area, do technology assessments, and help the Congress in a rapidly changing environment. I have been around long enough that I still call your organization the General Accounting Office from time to time. Uh, what has been the, the basis of that evolution? What have been the key components to what success you believe that you've had in that transition from being an accounting and auditing organization to being a, a broad, almost a consulting firm for Congress and for the agencies on management operations, cybersecurity, and the other things that you referenced a moment ago, Gene? Yeah, well, it's... Uh been a testimony to GAO's resilience and adaptability that we've changed and evolved as the needs of the Congress have changed, as the needs of the country indeed have changed, both domestically and internationally. And so we've always had a strong commitment to two principles that have held us in, in good stead over time, Francis. One uh, is to have a dedicated, talented workforce. So that's been very dynamic and central to our involvement. As you mentioned, we're a multidisciplinary organization right now with a tremendous range of skills. We have uh, also arrangements, for example, with the National Academy of Sciences to help us in the science and technology area. But our workforce has been tremendous and it's a testimony to the uh, both past and, and current GAO uh, workers during that period of time. So the, so the fundamental bedrock commitment to nonpartisan, objective, independent, fact-based information has remained, but the scope of our responsibilities across the entire federal government have changed and evolved to meet the needs of the Congress. And indeed, we're given many, many uh, unique assignments. For, for example, right now we're uh, doing monthly briefings and bi-monthly reports on the impact of the coronavirus rescue effort on public health and also the economy. What resources do you need to continue the momentum that you're outlining here, Gene? Well, I've continually advised the Congress that we could use uh, some additional resources. Congress has been very supportive. They've given us resources to expand in the science and technology area most recently. And in our Office of General Counsel, we're getting a lot of questions about appropriation law uh, matters and, uh, and other uh, legal uh, assistance that the Congress has been required. Uh, I'm going to continue to request additional resources to expand in the science and technology area. 
and also in cybersecurity, Francis. As, as you've known from our past discussions, I've long been concerned about cybersecurity. We initially designated it as a high risk area across the, far, uh, the federal government in 1997. We added uh, critical infrastructure protection in 2003. Uh, we're still, as a government, not operating at a Pence pace commensurate with the evolving threat in that area. So I want to have some additional resources in that area as well. Gene, you're one of the few leaders in government that serves a 15-year term. You still have about a third of your term left, and I want to talk about your agenda for the agency moving forward. More of my conversation with the Comptroller General of the United States, Gene Dodaro, when Government Matters continues. You're watching ABC7. Welcome back to Government Matters. The Government Accountability Office will celebrate its 100th birthday this year. Its leader has five years left in a 15-year term. Gene Dodaro is Comptroller General of the United States. He leads the GAO. Gene, thanks for continuing this conversation. In the time that you have left, what, and I don't mean to imply that, it's, that you're running out. You still have five years. Uh, but what do you want to accomplish personally in leading this organization for the next five years? Well, Francis, I uh, set out uh, during my tenure to do several things. One was to make sure GAO was always postured to address the most important national issues facing the country. You'd be hard pressed to find a national issue that we're not doing some work on uh, at, at the moment or have done work on in the past. I've uh, strengthened our strategic planning, our strategic foresight work. I want to continue to do that to make sure we're postured because there's a lot of uh, evolving and emerging issues that need to be addressed and it's better for us to anticipate and do the work ahead of time if possible. Uh, secondly, I want to continue to focus on our high risk series, which we've had in place since 1990. These are the greatest risk across government. I'm focused on not only identifying the risk, but helping agencies solve these issues and get as many issues resolved and off the list as possible. Third, I want to continue to press uh, for the government to have a plan to get on a more fiscally sustainable long-term path. Uh, I've made recommendations to change how we set the debt ceiling approach, but we need a plan uh, to deal with our long-term debt and sustainability issues. In the short term, we need to do everything possible to deal with the pandemic. Uh, both from a public health standpoint and from uh, an economic uh, recovery standpoint. Uh, but once we're stable, we quickly need to pivot to a plan to address the long-term issues so that we're in a position to deal with future emergencies, to make a wise investments in the move forward. And lastly, Francis, I would say, uh, I've been focused on succession planning at the GAO to make sure we have a workforce that's postured for the 21st century. I've given a great emphasis to diversity, equity, and inclusion issues. I'm very proud of the fact that we've been the best place to work uh, for the entire time of my tenure. And, uh, and we've been number one rated among mid-size agencies in our support of diversity issues. So we, we, we need to be diverse, not only in uh, expertise and technical skills, but also by race, gender, et cetera. And we're doing very well in that regard, uh, but it needs to have continued work. My belief always has been is that GAO needs to be representative of the American people and, the, and representative of the elected officials that they uh, focus on. So I'm very focused on leaving the organization strong so that we're in a good position for the next 100 years. And, and I don't think anybody can have uh, any rumors, I'm going to be there the next hundred years, but my wife will assure me that that doesn't happen. I, I have every confidence that Mrs. Dodaro will make sure that you're not there for the next hundred years, Gene. What have you done personally, though, individually, or what have you done collectively to make sure that GAO stays where it is? Because I know personally, anecdotally, the evidence that I see is that morale there is very good. People like to work there. People want to stay there for a long time. What do you think the reasons for that success are? Well, the reasons are an unwavering commitment to public service and the ability at GAO to make a difference. We've worked to 
help save hundreds of billions of dollars, make thousands of improvements in public safety and other important operations of the of the of the government. Uh, and and so so it's a very satisfying job. But uh, it, there are several things that are key, Francis. Number one, I work hard to have good bipartisan relationships with the Congress. We need the outreach. We need to have a solid foundation that reinforces our nonpartisan status, that understands what the priorities and issues are of the Congress as, as responsive so that they will act on our recommendations, which they do on a fairly regular basis. So we need to press forward there. Within the organization, uh, communication is very important. Uh, since we've been in this pandemic, it's I've uh, and my executive committee, we hold town hall meetings uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, in the beginning, we were doing it every couple of weeks to communicate with all GAO people in 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 uh, you know in conference calls and in communications, etc. We take uh, very uh, seriously employee feedback that we receive. We've got good relationships with our union and all our employee groups. So I'm, I'm very, very uh, committed uh, to the GAO people. You know, we have one of the most talented, dedicated workforces among audit organizations in the world, Francis. And I do a lot of work internationally to try to help audit organizations in other countries develop their capacities, as well as state and local auditors here in the IGs. Uh, but uh, we have just tremendous people, and I, I care for them as I care for my own family, and uh, it's very important uh, that uh, they understand that and they know that I'm looking out for their well-being and also the well-being of the organization as a whole to continue to effectively accomplish its mission for supporting the Congress and carrying out their constitutional responsibilities, but also uh, concomitantly improving the performance and accountability of the federal government for the benefit of the American people. And people appreciate that. Gene Dodaro, thanks very much. I appreciate your time today. Congratulations on a hundred years of work at the Government Accountability Office, not all by you. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. I appreciate it. My best wishes go to you and your family. Take care.